Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about limits. Now, limits is a concept that you probably haven't run into in any of your other previous math courses. Previously, if we had a function and you wanted to say f of 2, you simply plugged in 2 to x and it either gave you an answer or it didn't give you an answer based on whether it was in the domain or not in the domain. So if I said, say, f of negative 4, if it's in x squared, you say f of negative 4, be negative 4 squared, be 16. If you have uh, f of x is square root of x, you have f of negative 4, and you say square root of negative 4 is undefined. Okay, or if you have f of x equals 1 over x plus 4, you plug in negative 4, it becomes 1 over 0 and it becomes undefined. Now, we're going to have to expand our discussion a little bit because in calculus, it's not so much what the graph itself is, it's what the graph is doing. And that's where we come into this concept of limits. Now, you'll notice I have the same four graphs that I had on the previous section on continuity. We really didn't even finish our discussion of continuity. I mentioned the three conditions, but we didn't actually test anything. So, in this case, we got to have to under understand limits before we can understand continuity. In this case, this is continuous. And so we're not going to have any troubles whatsoever because if it's continuous, it has a limit everywhere. So continuity implies the existence of a limit. Now, the way we would write this is I want to pick some random x value. I want to pick this. Now, I could call it 2. I could mark over and call it 2 or 3 or 4 or whatever it is. But I'm going to call it a. So as x approaches a, the question is, what y value goes with a? Well, the easiest thing is, if I have f of x equals x squared, I can simply plug it in and I say f of a equals a squared. And as long as a is defined, then a squared should be defined. There should be no problem. So let's pretend for a minute that it is actually 2. I would say, hey, f of 2, therefore... 2 squared is 4. So this would be potentially 2 comma 4. It exists. When I put something in, something comes out. It definitely exists. Now, the problem is, if I attempt over here on f of x equals 1 over x, and I say f of 0, and I try to come towards 0, I have 1 over 0. Well, that isn't defined. It's not there. But the thing is, is the graph approaching something when it comes there? Well, I have a problem. If I approach from this direction, it's going up towards positive infinity. If I approach 0 from this side, it's going down. And it's going toward negative infinity. So, in essence, they're, they're in disagreement, and this disagreement is a big problem. So, in this case, the graph existed, and in this case, as I came up toward a this way, and as I came toward a this way, they seem to be going to the same place. And so this one we had, yeah, seems to be going to the same place. We plugged it in, and yep, it's right there. So we got exactly what we expected. Here, as we approached from one way, we thought, well, maybe it's positive infinity. But if we approach from the other way, it's negative infinity. It's like, I don't know. They all disagree, and the thing doesn't exist anyway, and it's a problem. But the idea of a limit is as follows. A limit is abbreviated L-I-M, and it always talks about x, so you're always talking about some x value, as it approaches some value on x. In this case, we're going to say a, because I could approach any value. I could say it'd be approaching a value here, or here, or here, or here. And so it's limit as x approaches a of f of x. Now in this case, f of x was x squared. In this case, f of x was 1 over x. But this would be the notation that we're looking for. For a limit to exist, a value the graph or function approaches and may or may not touch. In this case, it approached it 
and it definitely was there. It totally touched it. In this case, it approached a value, and they went opposite directions. So we would say not only does the graph not exist, the limit doesn't exist. But let's take a look at this bad boy. As I approach A, I seem to be going toward this point here. As I approach from this direction, I seem to be going to about the same place. So I seem to be a green. So I would say the limit as x approaches a of this f of x, we would say it exists because it's going to match some value. In our particular case, we used previously the limit as x approaches 1, of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, we could find values by plugging them in. It's going to be uh, 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 0 0.9999, 0 0.99999. 9 9 9 9. Over here it's going to be 2, 1, or I'm sorry, it's going to be uh, 2, 1.5, 1 1.2, 1 1.1, 1 1.001, 1.0001. The problem is if I attempted to plug 1 actually in for it, it would become undefined. So in this case, the function does not exist, D and E. But the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x does indeed exist. It seems to be approaching a value. That value seems to be 1. So the whole concept of a limit is what does it seem to be approaching? It doesn't actually have to be there, but it has to approach it. And in fact, it has to approach it from two sides. In this case, we had it approaching 4. Approaching 4 so not only is the function for the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared is indeed 4. Now, over here we have another problem. In this case, the limit as x approaches 0 of, of our piecewise function f of x it seems to be approaching 4 in the previous equation from this side, and it seems to be approaching 0 from this side, because as we close in on 0, this one's going up, this one's coming down. We have a problem, we have a disagreement. So the limit does not exist. But if I actually plug in 0, I can say 0 squared equals 0. So in this case, the function is A-OK. -okay. It's the limit that doesn't exist. So the function totally exists right here, but the limit does not. So let's review very quickly. Here, the limit as it approaches exists. And the function also exists there. Here, the limit does not exist because they disagree. And the function doesn't exist because there's an asymptote. In this case, the limit exists, but the function isn't there when you get there. It's like a rainbow in the pot of gold. In this case, the function is the function definitely exists here, but they go to different places from each side, so the limit doesn't exist. So we have all sorts of issues going on here. By the way, there is one other example to take a look at, and that would be a situation like this. In this case, if this is f of x, the limit as x approaches some value a of f of x, I would say it exists because as we come down toward it and come up toward it, it seems to be going to the same place, so it exists. But if I try to take f of a, it also exists, but it's not where you expect to find it. It is significantly higher. 
So this point is up here rather than down here. So whereas f of x does exist, f of a does exist, the limit exists, the function exists, the problem is the two are not equal. That's going to bring us to our final discussion of continuity.